this short podcast is about the topic of inequalities in health. If any of you experience any issues in accessing this, please let me know and I'm happy to go through it with you separately. What we're going to cover in this presentation is an overview of what is meant by health and the social determinants of health. We're going to discuss how these determinants are linked to inequalities in health between different people and different social groups and ethnic groups. And we're going to talk about what potential exists to do something positive to make a change. So the commonly used definition of health hasn't really changed since the World Health Organization's definition back in the 1940s, which talks about not just being the absence of disease, it's also other factors as well, which you'll talk about over the next three years on your course. The word health actually comes from the Anglo-Saxon word meaning whole. So by definition, it was thought in the past that if you weren't healthy, you weren't whole. We're not there yet, but we have a very good understanding now of the factors that combine to give certain diseases. And it does seem that most common conditions are a combination of genetics, environment and choice or lifestyle behaviours. Things like cancer are certainly multifactorial. Obviously, some of these factors can't be changed. We can't change our genes or our genetics, um, but we can change other aspects of our lives. Things like housing and environments and our access to health services, we can have some influence over those and they are modifiable. And not surprisingly, the things that influence our health have become known collectively as the social determinants of health. And we understand quite a lot of them now, but some of them are being discovered as we speak. Inequalities in social conditions can give rise to unjust and unequal health outcomes for different social groups. And it's still rather shocking to look at some of the statistics about access to healthcare and lifespans in different socio-economic groups in the world. To have a society where everyone has an equal chance of health and an active lifestyle, we need to understand our society and we need to somehow regulate and implement systems that can take that into consideration. It's worth going through some definitions early on. So the social determinants of health are the social economic and political situations that affect our health, the health of our communities, friends, families, and populations as a whole. Absolute and relative inequalities in health are the differences between different groups, and it's a multi-dimensional concept, which also includes judgments that we make and the way that we measure health. Inequities are inequalities, really, and they tend to be related to the way that society functions. Unfortunately, even though we're well into the 21st century now, the social conditions which people find themselves in vary massively from one country to the other. And even within same parts of a country or a same county, you know, I live in Manchester, which is in the northwest of England. And within a very short drive, you can see massive changes in terms of poverty, food insecurity, social exclusion and discrimination, all the things that are listed here, um, different opportunities in childhood. And these all have an impact on our accessibility to health and our life as a result of these factors. As you well know, not everybody has the same opportunities or chances in life and the social determinants of health equally are not distributed equally or fairly across society. And they um, can follow us around depending on our childhood accessibility to education, diet, healthcare, that kind of thing. They can then move on into our later lives and limit our access to employment and subsequent poverty and subsequent health decline. And for example, poverty is linked very closely with poor housing and vice versa, access to health services, and all of these things operate at different levels in a fairly small country like the UK. Kind of shocking to see that in a civilised country like the UK, we still have food banks more than ever. So on the one hand, it's quite heartening to know that people will look out for each other and help each other. I'm recording this in the middle of the coronavirus crisis. But at the same time, really, we shouldn't have to do this. Poverty can take many different forms, obviously. And one of the things that affects young women and girls is period poverty. The taxation on sanitary products, which I think has now been removed, was a major sticking point at one point and it, it just doesn't seem right that something that's a necessity should be taxed. 
Fuel poverty is a real issue. The cost of fuel is expensive, combined with the fact that older generations were brought up in a culture where they wouldn't put the heating on because it was too expensive. So every year in the UK there are people that will die of hypothermia, which is absolutely astounding. The concept of health equity is important and it talks about the values and fairness in society and justice that's available to people. A subsequent focus on health equity means that valuing health is an essential and valuable resource for human development and helps people to reach their maximum potential. It's seen as a general public good and for the greater good of society it's extremely important that we have equity amongst everyone. One of the real issues in public health is how do we measure something that's preventative, for example, or something that is very long term benefit, such as a decrease in heart disease over a 20, 30 year period. The first thing we need is an adequate baseline to help us to understand where we are at the moment. We need more information about causes of death, reasons behind choices that people make, use of health services or inability to access health services and how these different patterns are looked at across different demographic or socio-economic groups and different geographical areas as well. Social scientists have proposed three approaches really and I've listed them here. One of them is to focus intentionally on the most disadvantaged groups in society, targeting them to try and improve their health opportunities. Secondly, to narrow the gaps between the top and the bottom. And thirdly, to reduce the social gradient. So looking at the differences in society and trying to equalize them along the various levels of the income ladder. If we are to appropriately measure and improve the situation in regard to health inequalities, we must first of all give a voice to the people that don't have one, to the voiceless. We also ideally should describe and analyze data separately for men and women because of our differences. Likewise, there are differences in socio-economic position and ethnicity and geography. And finally, we should provide health systems that aren't based on our ability to pay, but should be consistently of the highest standard to all. Here I've listed the key determinants of health. Just might be worth having a think about each one of them and thinking about when you've come across examples of each of these and how it might influence people's health. Certainly when you come to go on clinical placement, you'll come across these as relevant factors. A slightly simpler list here, we've narrowed it down to income, poverty, education and health. These are the four things that are still major inequalities in society today. I couldn't really make this recording without talking about coronavirus. There's been an awful lot now about coronavirus and which groups of people it seems to affect and there's a an increasingly clear list of people who are vulnerable, not just the elderly. So for example, it does appear to affect black and ethnic minority people more, people with comorbidities and people of a lower um, social status really. I think one of the problems with the COVID crisis is that we tend to look at things in black and white terms. So we assume that two meter distance is safe, but one meter isn't, but it's a sliding scale. You know, so two meters is less likely than one meter, but three meters is even better. And four meters distance is even better than that. Obviously, four meters distancing wouldn't allow society to function. So we have to make a gamble and we have to set this dial at a, an acceptable level of risk. I thought this was a useful summary of the impact of COVID-19 in black and minority ethnic communities. And thank you for your time and I hope you found this useful and you will certainly, as your career progresses as physiotherapists, come across more examples of inequalities in health which are quite distressing really. But if you need to talk about any of the things that you witness, don't forget that we've got a great team of supportive lecturers here who are more than happy to support you in any way. <laughs>